Hey guys, Will here. Welcome back to the channel. So today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can optimize the VR experience in Assetto Corsa Competizione. So ACC came out about 18 months ago now, back in late 2018. And pretty much straight away, there was a lot of people complaining about poor quality visuals in VR as well as in triple screens. And I myself even did a review where I was less than impressed with the quality of the experience overall with triple screens. Now, there was a patch released back in late December that fixed a lot of those problems, introduced better quality VR support as well. And we also had the version 1.3 patch along with the DLC for the uh, Intercontinental GT pack yesterday as well. So I've been getting hit with a lot of questions over the last few days from you guys wanting to know how to optimize the experience here. So we're going to split this up into a few different sections. First of all, I want to talk about the system requirements in general, and I guess managing expectation around that. Then we're going to talk about some fundamentals around how to actually set up a PC to run most efficiently. And then we'll have a look at the settings themselves both in the NVIDIA drivers as well as in Assetto Corsa Competizione. So stick around, this one should be a helpful one. So first of all, always do make sure that you're checking the system requirements before you purchase any title. That goes for sim racing, any other game as well. The system requirements for modern games like ACC are a lot more harsh, so to speak, than what we're used to in sim racing, simply because, you know, Assetto Corsa Competizione is something that came out in late 2018. So it's a much more recent game, therefore it's a lot more resource hungry and it's, you know, it's part of progression in general. If you go back to Assetto Corsa, that is now six years old. And obviously we have seen a lot of progress there in terms of things like shader patches, soul mod and stuff like that, that have added a lot of, I guess, visual fidelity and a lot of extra system requirement on top of the base. But also, you know, going back to iRacing, that's 12 years old now. And again, while we've had a lot of progress there as well, the system requirements there are obviously going to be a lot lower than what they are for something that is released more recently. Now, if you go and you have a look at Assetto Corsa compared to AC, or even iRacing compared to ACC, you can see there's a lot of things there in terms of detail, particularly close to you. So a lot of you know extra polygons that it's having to draw detail in the off-track stuff, detail in the fencing, the walls, the trees, all that stuff takes up system resources. And so therefore, I guess what I'm saying here is that it's you know, it's only natural that you're going to need a more high-end machine to run a game like ACC than what you need to run some of the older titles. So I think a lot of this is going to boil down to managing expectation. Obviously, if you've got a lower-end system, you're not going to be able to run higher-end games, and that's just the way it is for everybody. But nonetheless, there are definitely some things that we can do to maximize the overall experience. So let's start off talking about the PC itself. So I do have a particularly high-end system. I'm running a 9900K processor locked at 5.2 gigahertz on all cores, so no throttling. A uh, 2080 Ti running at two gigahertz. I've got 32 gig of RAM as well. Uh, two terabyte, no, it's a one terabyte 970 Pro SSD. So pretty much up there in terms of specs for today's standard. But the other thing that I've done to optimize this machine is this is literally a dedicated sim racing PC. So I don't have any other software running on it. There's no bloatware, there's no office applications, there's no email, there's no, you know, no, nothing like that. Literally all I'm running on this machine is Discord, the drivers, for the various different peripherals that I'm running here, all the hardware, and then the Sims themselves and OBS to actually stream out. Now, I've done a video previously where I went over exactly how I record all my racing videos, so I'll link that above my head for you now. But it is absolutely vitally important that you keep your machine as clean as you possibly can. Now, I know that a lot of you aren't lucky enough to have a dedicated machine for sim racing, but yeah, just be aware that if you're running you know, all sorts of bloatware on your machine. If you've got all sorts of apps running in the background, particularly if you've got web browsers running with lots of tabs, make sure you close them off before you try to run anything because they are massively resource hungry, particularly in terms of RAM. So close everything off that you don't absolutely need and try to keep the system as clean as you possibly can. That is definitely something that is commonly overlooked, but something that is also vitally important to getting a smooth and consistent frame rate as well. Often, you know, you've got something running in the background, you might be getting a really good frame rate, and then suddenly it decides to go 100% CPU load in the background, and then your frame rate drops through the floor, and it's just an overall bad experience. So try to keep things as clean as you possibly can. So that is my advice in terms of general maintenance and how to sort of start off from a fundamentally good base point. And then from there, we get into talking about the system settings more specifically. Now I'm running an HP Reverb headset here. A lot of you are gonna be running different headsets, different levels of hardware, and there's gonna be a lot of variables here. So I'm certainly not recommending that you copy my settings. Basically what I'm gonna try and communicate here 
is a fundamental understanding of what some of these settings do, how they impact performance so that you can fine tune them and tweak them to suit your own system specs. So the, the settings that we're gonna be looking at here are specific to Steam VR compatible headsets. But again, it should establish a pretty good base point. A lot of the settings are similar for Oculus, things like super sampling and stuff like that. So this should give you a good fundamental understanding. It's always a little bit awkward making videos like this because they're only gonna be directly relevant to a very small group of people. But we'll do our best to try and keep it as generic as we possibly can. So we'll start off with a quick look at the NVIDIA control panel settings first. Now I leave everything pretty much as it is out of the box here. Uh, you can see everything's pretty much set to default, but there is one setting down the bottom here that's been added in the last couple of driver updates, virtual reality variable rate super sampling or VRSS. So super sampling for those who aren't aware is where you actually render frames at a higher resolution than the native resolution of the output device. So say for example, you're running at full HD, so 1920 by 1080, you might super sample at 4K resolution and then downscale. And that gives the benefit in some situations of a slightly sharper looking image a lot of you guys that are experienced with VR will know that often in the center of the screen when you're looking into the distance in particular things can look quite pixelated quite blurry super sampling is a really great way to improve the overall visual quality in there but it does obviously come with a performance hit as well as soon as you're rendering more pixels you're increasing the load on the system and obviously you then end up dropping the frame rate so it becomes a balancing act between frame rate and overall visual fidelity here so what VRSS or variable rate super sampling does is it focuses the super sampling just on the area areas that are in the middle of your field of view. So basically what it's saying is everything that's outside of those sort of areas in the middle is sort of just your peripheral vision. It's not really important and the fidelity isn't so important there. So what it's doing is it's scaling back the super sampling in those areas that are less important so that it can optimize the amount of processing that's available. So it's kind of like a have your cake and eat it too kind of scenario where you're getting the extra quality where you need it and sort of sacrificing it in the areas where it isn't so important. Now at the time of making this video, unfortunately VRSS is only compatible with a few titles and none of those are sim racing titles. None of those are ACC unfortunately either. So this isn't gonna give you any benefit at the moment in ACC, but it's something that I just wanted to quickly mention because it is gonna be a bit of a game changer I think once it is supported by some of the sim racing titles. So I just wanted to cover that quickly first. So next up, let's jump into Steam VR settings. So open up your little Steam VR dialog here, click on the uh, hamburger menu, click on settings and that will bring up this console here. So the first thing you wanna make absolutely sure of is that you are running at 90 Hertz here as your refresh rate. I find sometimes with my reverb, it boots up at 60 Hertz for some strange reason. I unplug it, plug it back in again and it comes good at 90 Hertz. Don't need to change the setting there or anything. It just kind of does it sometimes. So make sure you are running at 90 Hertz. I've um, spent hours in the past trying to optimize my settings to only find that I was running at 60 Hertz and that was the reason why it looked like crap. So yeah, make sure you're running at the maximum refresh rate. And then we have our resolution per eye here. Now this is purely just super sampling like we talked about earlier. So at 100%, we're running at the native resolution of the panels in your headset. So it'll vary depending on the headset that you have, obviously. For ACC, I like to run it at 126%. I find that that seems to be a pretty good sweet spot between overall clarity and not putting too much of a performance hit on the system as well. So the lower you have this, the less load it's gonna put on your system, but the less you're gonna have in terms of visual quality. And you really find in ACC specifically, you know, you really start to get blurry graphics around the center of the, um, the center of the picture as you're looking into the distance. So stuff up close looks okay, but as you're looking into the distance and spotting cars, it gets really hard to sort of see the details, stuff like that. So increasing this setting as far as you can before you start to sacrifice frame rate really helps a lot. And make sure that you don't have any overrides in here as well. So this is my general setting that I use across the board for every single title. If we go into video here, we can set it here as well. And we also have per application video settings as well. So if I go to ACC here, you can see at the moment it's set to 100%. So I wanna change that to 126%. Now, one interesting thing that I found, and I'm not 100% sure on exactly how this works, but I found that I need to set it here as well as the same value in ACC. If I set it in ACC, but not here, it doesn't seem to work properly and I still get that kind of blurry graphics. I don't know whether that is part of the reason maybe why people are fiddling around with this setting and then finding it's not really making any difference for them. But at least in my experience, setting it here first and then going and setting it in the game seems to do the job. So that's all we need to do in terms of Steam VR settings. Everything else is good to go. So let's boot up ACC now and we'll have a look at the settings in there. So we click on options, we click on video and we're presented with all of our customization options here. So 
Start off with full screen, we obviously want that enabled. We want a resolution that's gonna be the resolution of the panel that is being outputted to. So even when VR is running, it still seems to detect the output of the, of the panel that we're using for the VR view. So don't really need to change that. It won't significantly impact your VR experience, at least not with Steam VR and with the HP Reverb at least. Uh, V-Sync, I'm going to leave that disabled. Uh, find that enabling it, all that does is really give us a performance hit. Doesn't really change much in terms of VR anyway. Frame rate limit, we want to set that to be the same as our refresh rate on our headset. So if you had a 60 hertz or 120 hertz headset, you would set it to match that. That way we're not wasting PC resources on drawing frames that aren't actually going to be drawn by the headset. So limit that to the same as your refresh rate. Menu frame rate limiter, I'll just leave that enabled. Doesn't really matter. Triple screen output, obviously irrelevant if you're running VR. HDR output, again, irrelevant on a uh, on a VR headset. So resolution scale, we're going to crank that up to match our uh, super sampling setting from the Steam VR console. So in our case, it was 126%, so we'll crank that up now. And that, again, is basically just increasing the resolution of the graphics that are being drawn. So it gives us a little bit of extra detail in the distance. So view distance, I've set this down to medium. It's something that I'm willing to sacrifice a bit on, simply because when you're concentrating on driving, you're only really paying attention to the things that are in your immediate vicinity anyway. So I'm happy to sort of sacrifice a bit of visual quality here for extra frame rate. So that's a good one to crank down. I think one of the first ones that you want to crank down. Shadows as well now. I leave the shadows high in ACC simply because the way the engine works in ACC, when you crank the shadows down, the cars start to look like they're floating on the track. So I like to try and keep the shadow setting a little bit higher than I otherwise would. Most games I crank this down, one of the first things I do, but uh, yeah, for ACC, I like to leave this on high. You'll see nothing really is set to epic for VR for me. And that's just to try and maximize my uh, frame rate and the visual quality at the same time. Get the best visuals as I can without sacrificing frame rate. So shadow distance, again, I've got it set to high because I can. You could definitely crank this down to medium or even low if you needed to, to increase your uh, to increase your performance a little bit. Anti-aliasing. Now, again, this is going to depend on the... Um, on the resolution of the headset that you're running. I find setting it to temporal with a medium setting works quite well, remembering that we are doing super sampling as well. So the higher the resolution of the graphics that are being drawn, the less we're gonna rely on anti-aliasing to sort of smooth things up. So I've got it set to mid and temporal. Again, you can fine tune this to your own preference. Effects, again, set to high. You can sacrifice this if you don't really care about the visual effects. But uh, again, I can get away with high, so I do. Post-processing, again, high. Foliage, I set it to medium. Again, it's something that I'm willing to sacrifice because when you're concentrating on driving, it's not really something that you're paying attention to. So that's, you know, the detail in the leaves on the trees and things like that. Textures, I like to leave that relatively high because it does give a little bit more of an immersive experience. So mirror view distance, I've cranked this down as far as I'm comfortable with. You don't really need to be able to see cars that are miles and miles and miles behind you. About 80 meters is where it becomes useful, at least in my sort of opinion. So that's where I've got it set. Mirror quality, again, something that I'm willing to sacrifice for higher frame rates. So if you're able to get away with a higher setting, by all means do so. But again, something that I'm willing to sacrifice to increase my frame rates. Mirror resolution, I like to leave that on high because I didn't find it had a massive impact on the overall performance anyway. Opponent visibility, if you're finding that your CPU bottleneck particularly, cranking this down does help quite a lot. It's not so much of a load on the graphics card, but yeah, having to draw all those additional cars does seem to load up the CPU quite intensively. So you can crank this down to just the cars that are immediately around you. But for me, at least on this system, I'm leaving it set to all. So down to virtual reality. Now this is grayed out at the moment because I don't have the VR headset running while I'm capturing the screen for you guys. But you would set this again, pixel density would be 126% or whatever you've got your super sampling set to. Virtual to real scale, I leave this at 100%. Didn't really find that it made any difference to the overall visual quality. And uh, yeah, kind of made things look a little bit funny if I changed that, so left that at 100. Now, again, all of these advanced settings here are gonna come down to fine tuning around your system and the headset that you're running. But you can see here for my system running high. Temporal up sampling, you can leave this disabled if you're not running below 100% on your super sampling. Bloom quality, again, willing to sacrifice a little bit here. This is the way the light diffuses around objects and things like that. So willing to sacrifice a little bit there, again, in terms of uh, quality for frame rate. Volumetric fog, same deal again. Foliage, level of detail. I was able to get away with high here. Level of detail on the cars, that's something that's quite important to me. So something that I wanted to keep cranked up. HLOD, this is the hierarchical level of detail. So I leave this enabled. That allows the system to sort of determine what it thinks it should be sacrificing in terms of the hierarchy of where it should be including detail. So I leave that enabled. Advanced sharpener filter, I leave that one enabled too. Now moving down to image customization here, most of these settings don't 
don't have a large impact on performance. Motion blur has a little bit of an impact, so I do leave that disabled. I'm not a big fan of motion blur effect anyway, but the rest of these settings don't really have an impact on performance, so to speak. It's more just personal taste adjustment. So we'll leave all of those alone. And that is it, guys. So those are the settings that I use for my HP Reverb with my 9900K and 2080 Ti graphics card. And again, hopefully this gives you a good starting point for how you can fine tune things and how you can prioritize settings based on your own system. I certainly don't expect people to just sort of be able to copy my settings directly and have a good experience. There is gonna be some time required in fine tuning, but hopefully this gives you a good starting point. But let me know in the comments how you go with this, guys. Let me know if it makes a difference for you. And if you use different settings that you've found have worked well, let me know as well. And I'd be happy to include those in a future video. So hopefully this video has helped you out. Just a quick one today. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.